With what shall we come before the Holy One and bow ourselves before God on high? God has shown us what is good. What does the Holy One require of us? But to do justly, to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Continue to pray silently. Here is the assurance of pardon. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts to hear your word, O God. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I read this, let's just think for a moment about verbs. A verb is a word with muscles. Verbs are action words, words that get something done. I want you to notice in our reading today that Paul's language is muscular, filled with imperative verbs, verbs words of command, marching orders. The key to understanding this text is to follow the verb. Seek the things that are above. Set your mind on things that are above. Put to death whatever in you is earthly. Get rid of former ways. Strip yourself of the old self. Clothe yourself with the new self. So listen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, an abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, 
slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Thanks be to God. I want to speak to you about the act of life. In the act of life, the first thing is to seek the things that are above. Seek the things above where Christ is. I wonder, where is that for you? The things above. Jan, my wife, when I asked her, said it was when she sits on her swing behind the barn and looks at the beauty of the trees, the flowers, the shrubs, and gives thanks. A friend of ours talks about the power of a Bible verse. Be still and know that I am God and its power to lift her above the cares of the day. For me, the things above can be so many things. A Bach corral, the words of a devotional reading which break open new understanding, or the artist's insight in a painting or icon into the mystery of holiness. Seek the things that are above. The poet says that the world is too much with us. The daily schedule, the background noise, the constant stream of words and images clamoring for our attention, the days, the months pass, and we find ourselves captive, stuck on the sur surface of things, never looking up. I want us to let this time we have together right now to be the chance to seek the things that are above. God is inviting us through the words of scripture and sermon, the sharing of the sacrament, the words of prayer, to look up, to set our mind on the things that are above, things that last and give importance to the everyday things around us. Seek the things that are above. Set your minds on things that are above. Isn't that the way we're looking when we open ourselves anew to the good news that Jesus died for us on the, on the cross, that we are forgiven? We're looking above. Isn't that the way we're looking when we get strength and purpose for dealing with life's problems? Looking above. Isn't that the way we're looking when we pray for someone? We take God's wonderful gift of imagination and we visualize the situation from above. We see our situation. We see the other person as healthier, more connected, more hopeful. Paul says this perspective from above, the perspective of faith, is hidden, hidden with Christ. In God, you and I have only partial provisional sight. We have to have faith that what we can see from above will come to pass before it ever does. And it may not for a long time. But set your minds on it. The first part of the act of life. The second part is put on the new self. This is at the heart of Paul's message, and it takes a lifetime. It doesn't happen overnight, and it is hard work, constant work, making the hard choices. In the book, Anne of Green Gables, Anne visits the bedside of Ruby, a young woman whose life is nearing its end a life which has been devoted to trivial pursuits and preoccupations. And Ruby is terrified of death. She clings to Anne, beseeching her not to leave her alone. The author, Lucy Montgomery, describes the scene that follows. Anne walked home very slowly in the moonlight. The evening had changed something for her. 
life held a different meaning, a deeper purpose. On the surface, it would go on just the same, but the deeps had been stirred. It must not be with her as with poor butterfly Ruby. When she came to the end of one life, it must not be to face the next with shrinking terror of something wholly different, something for which a custom thought and ideal and aspiration had unfitted her. The little things of life, sweet and excellent in their place, must not be the things lived for. The highest must be sought and followed. The life of heaven must be begun here on earth. Did you catch it? The urgency of it? The deeps had been stirred. Anne is awake to the absolute need for the decisions she must make to put on the new self, which in Paul's language is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. Are you awake to that? Am I? Nothing is more important. Nothing is more demanding. Jesus said you must build upon the rock. You must enter by the narrow gate. Must must hard choices necessary to fashion the new self according to the image of its creator. Now stay with me. Don't go off into wrong-headed notions like working your way to heaven or earning God's favor. In Jesus Christ, God offers us life, abundant life, stronger than anything else as a free gift. Nothing can defeat the love God offers. God has done for us what we could never do ourselves. You and I cannot work hard enough or long enough to earn or deserve it. The new self you and I have is a gift. That's the gospel. But, but, the gift has a therefore attached to it. The new self, like a garden plant, has to be nurtured and weeded, cultivated and tended, protected. Something is trying to grow, to expand, to flourish, and needs our help. Moral choices must be made again and again. Paul says, strip off the old self with its practices, put to death the ways you once followed. Get rid of such things. Follow the verbs. Seek the things that are above. Put on the new self. And then the third part, look around. How do you and I make the hard choices hour by hour, day after day, over the weeks and months and years? You cannot do this by yourself. I cannot. In order to look at life from above, in order to put on the new self, you and I need each other. We need correction, connection. We need examples. We need brothers and sisters in the family of faith. Remember I talked about the verbs? Seek the things that are above. Set your minds on things that are above. Put to death whatever in you is earthly. Get rid of former ways. Strip off the old self. Clothe yourself with a new self. Remember? All these verbs are plural. Seek the things that are above together. Set your mind on the things that are above together. Strip off the old self, clothe yourself with the new self together. You don't get to the things that are above by building a tower for yourself or putting up a wall to keep others out. No, you get to the things that are above to the new self by taking down walls and fences. You get to renewal by opening up a line of communication and connection with those around you. That's how we get closer to God and God's purpose for us. How do I know? It's there. 
in the Bible? What follows the four Gospels? What's God's plan for the followers of Jesus once he has left them and gone to heaven and is hidden from them? What is next? The Acts of the Apostles. To be a follower of Jesus, you need to be with other followers. In order to seek the things that are above, in order to put on the new self, look around. Here's how it works. I grow closer to God by listening to you describe your struggles, your search for faith. I seek the things above by reading the Bible with you, listening to the testimony of someone who is experiencing the living God. My faith is lifted by praying with you and being willing to open my heart and longings to you. It is rubbed by rubbing up against the reality of you and others, facing what may be uncomfortable, disagreeable, that the old self can be stripped off. God can use that transforming love to break open my inner places, expose the shameful secrets, so that my new self can grow and develop it. I can't explain it. I only know it works. And get this. You and I do not get to decide who is in or out of the church. We do not get to pick the members of our family of faith. We do not get to surround ourselves only with people like us. Paul describes who is meant to be there, who is to be included. He says, here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in in all. Do you get it? In the church, there can be no labels, no popularity contests, no preferred types, no requirements based on color or sex or politics or nationality or income. You and I are to affirm and maintain the human fellowship through which our salvation comes to us. Only Christ is the one who unites us all in all. We must seek the things that are above where Christ is. We must put on the new self and we must look around. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored your image within us. In your mercy, let us share the divine fellowship of Jesus Christ who came to share our humanity and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and the resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise, O God. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and the blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ, with all who share this feast, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit now and forever. And as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come to the table. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this, remembering me. And after supper, our Savior took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, blood shared, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. body of Christ given for you. Please take the bread. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you, drink of it, all of you. Amen.
Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace to love and to serve the Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.